Hello, everybody. How's it going? Ben Gothard here, founder and show host of Project Egg. How's it going? Uh, today, we have a very, very, very special guest, and it is with the utmost of happiness and excitement that I introduce you to the wonderful, the brilliant, the international best-selling author, Dale L. Roberts. How you doing, Dale? Dude, you worked it up so big, so awesome. I was getting ready to spin my chair and then I realized I have my earphones in and that would just, everything would fall over because you don't see on either side of me are lights and lights and I got the mic and I've got this and it, it would just be a mess. So I'm spinning virtually. Just <laughs> pretend like you guys see that in your mind right now. Fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, you know, just for everybody listening, this is going to be a action-packed, value-packed, and knowledge-packed workshop where Dale and I are going to break down for you exactly how you, yes, you, can become an international best-selling author. But before we get into the actual steps, and we have you know a couple nice steps laid out for you, I want Dale, I want you to share your story a little bit because your story is one that has impacted me a lot. Uh, you know, you're you're an incredible mentor to me and, uh, you know, we've been friends for a while now. But just to make sure that everybody knows who you are and knows your story, why don't you give maybe, uh, you know, a brief summary of how you got, uh, you know, from where you started, how you got to where you are now being an international best-selling author. And that's tremendous, man. And I always appreciate you saying things like mentor, but I always consider you my buddy. And that's that's just one of those things that, you know, I, I, a lot of people are like, oh, he's so humble. It's just true. Uh, I, I say the same thing to you and the people that I've crossed paths with, like Scott J. Marshall II and such. It's because, look, I'm just like you. I'm just like anybody else that'd be watching this, that I had a nine to five job that was helping me pay the bills. I really enjoyed it. And, um, but there was always something missing in my life. I really love my wife. I love being around her. And unfortunately, that job was standing between that time with her. And I needed to find a way that I could get there. And this was about in 2013, when I, I got a challenge from my wellness coach, of all things, she couldn't challenge me anymore with physical activities. She couldn't challenge me with eating the proper diet. She just kind of found, it was like, okay, this guy's got a lot of stuff. But she said to me one time, I think it'd be really awesome if you wrote all this stuff down into a book. And I was like, now that's a challenge because ever since I was a boy, I'd always wanted to be a writer, though I wanted to be a fiction writer. Nonetheless, I said, challenge accepted. And I started out by just hammering out as much content as I could. I didn't know who I was writing for. All I did was just brain dump all the information I learned through health and fitness into one gigantic 44,000 word book. I didn't tell you that last time, I think. So 44,000 words, it was a mess. But it got me to where I built my confidence and I was able to sell my first book. And when I saw there was proof of concept, to me instantaneously, I said, here's my out. Here's the way that I can step out of that nine to five job and be around my wife more often. And don't do this, folks. Listen to me. If you've got a job that's paying the bills, don't just burn the boats, all right? Be realistic because what I did was I said, all right, that's it. Got a hold of my boss, said 30 days, I'm out of here. Gave him a 30 day notice because I was department manager. And um, to say the least, the first year was was rough. And thankfully, I had a safety net of a savings account, a 401k that I was able to deplete and really make ends meet until eventually I was able to get certain systems in places such as getting courses, such as hiring a coach, such as really starting to absorb myself in this whole business and understand it better to where I could see better successes that I was able to arrive to where I am at today, where I feel very comfortable with where I'm at. Could I be better? Absolutely. Who's, who's going to rest on their laurels? And so hopefully we can kind of uncover some of those systems and talk about that today because um, I can't make any guarantees or promises, I think, as you can't either. Right, Ben? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And, and I'm glad you actually brought that up because, you know, in, in entrepreneurship and in business and in anything, it's never a guarantee. 
right? I mean, you can we can we can arm you with the absolute best tactics, which we will be doing. Um, and you know, we'll give you we're gonna basically you know, re reveal the curtain, give you the keys to the kingdom, but it's never a guarantee, right? The only things that, that we can do is prepare you so that you can have the best chance of success. Yeah. Well, very good, man. I'm really pumped that we can get on here today. So what do you got in mind? So I want to start from the beginning, okay? I want to talk about the very first step that these wonderful people need to know in order to become an international best-selling author. So I want to talk about in the very beginning, writing to market. Okay. And, and I want to go over four things in particular. The first one is niche research and selection. So can you give us some insight? Yeah, it's, it's really important that you don't just try to fly blindly into writing something like I did. I unfortunately didn't know who I was writing for originally in that first book and hence why uh, long story short, that book earned a little bit of money. Thanks, mom. I really appreciate you buying those copies. <laughs> um, but ultimately, I didn't know who my audience was or who I was writing for or even what I was writing about outside of just doing some exercises. So that's where you're just going to really need to, first of all, A, define who you're talking to. It's just so important that you, you know there's a huge difference in how you talk to your grandma versus your eight-year-old niece. Big, big difference. And when you can start to understand that and get a better grasp of that, you're going to have better chances of success. I'm not saying that you can't become successful in being generalized, but here's the thing. You're going to greaten your chances of discovery as well as getting your actual market and becoming successful if you can just niche it down, hyper-focus those things. When it comes to niche research, just going to make it super simple, Ben, because otherwise we would spend the next five hours me talking on how to actually research niches. But here's what you need to do is, first of all, A, if you've defined your audience, you've defined their problem, be it anything that, say, for instance, a fiction person, if they love reading werebear romance books, okay, their problem is they want to escape the reality. They want to suspend their disbelief for X amount of minutes per day you might have that werebear shapeshifter romance that you can fulfill on that. You got something such as mine where somebody's wanting to lose weight, then there's going to be a good chance that you're going to want to write something that's based on that. So know exactly your market, know exactly how you're going to find it. It's just simple. Google, that's amazing. Search, search engine's wonderful, by the way. Google's awesome. And then here we go. You ready for this? It's mind blowing. You ready for this? It's going to send your eyebrows. Amazon. Yep. Amazon is a search engine. A lot of people are like, oh, it's a store. No, it's it's a search engine. It literally takes people, people type in their problems to find and search for a solution in Amazon inside the store. So it's just a simple case of figure out what the problem is, search it up, and then you're going to be able to find out is something profitable, is it not? It's just seeing exactly how much it's making or what kind of a rank it has. And then you've got yourself a winning situation. So I know I kind of sped through that really, really fast. But I think that there's some even higher ticket items we're going to talk about that goes beyond just how to write to market. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, niche research, too, because it is so, so, so important. Right. Um, you know, when, when you first started writing, um, it seems like you kind of went from a place of, OK, I have this knowledge and now I want to share it, right? And 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 so you kind of channeled that, and you know I believe you said you didn't really do that much niche research in the beginning. So oh, yeah. just for the sake of beginners out there, for people who are just kind of getting started, let's say they have this fiery burning passion. Okay, well how do they, you know, and, and maybe a quick uh, quick steps. How do they translate that into their niche, right? Like let, let's say I have a fiery burning passion for passive income. How do I take that idea and turn that into a niche? Hmm, that's that's a really good point. Sometimes knowing exactly what your skill set is or your knowledge set is is going to be part of that battle. The next thing is trying to match that up, that skill set with a particular audience. You've got one extreme and the other that I mentioned before in the grandma and the eight-year-old niece. Obviously, those are just two extreme scenarios. Sometimes you get into those areas that are just a little bit more gray. Where you're kind of going, oh, am I talking to males? Am I talking to females? 
Am I talking to people between the ages of 25 and 34? So there's so much that you're going to want to tweak down. If you're a newbie person, one thing I would recommend is try to at least get a rough idea of your demographic. And then that way you can start to put produce that. So um, for instance, if you're within your demographic, Ben, you know, uh, in the ages of 25 to uh, 34, correct? Yes. Okay. So it's just going to be a case of, it's going to be super easy for you to know what kind of books you typically look for. You've got friends also that probably look for those same type of books. So just talking with the inner circle is going to help figure out where you're looking for. Hey, do you got any good ideas on passive income books or what's your favorite passive income book? That's going to be really cool because you won't even have to use a search engine. You can just jump on social media through Twitter or Facebook or even Google Plus if you want to. Okay, no, no I'm not going to push my luck here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There's people out there who loves Google Plus. Uh, any event, um, so that's going to be another way that you can kind of research is finding out what exactly they like. And so they're going to do this research for you because they're going to tell you what books they like on, say, passive income or Wear, Bear, Shapeshifter, Romance, or How to Lose 10 Pounds in 7 Days. So you've got all these different solutions. You can find it all within your inner circle. And then the next thing is just taking those books and going into, once again, something like Amazon and seeing what customers have also bought. There's also bought is just such a huge untapped resource. They're giving you exactly what people are buying within that niche. So now all you have to do is find one book that's doing well. Customers also bought. Oh, bing, 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 bing. There we go. I've got all these different books. Now I've got a better idea of the direction that I want to go, how I want to title things, how I want to subtitle things. What does my book description need to look like? And how does my cover need to look? So that way it is at least in alignment with what my audience expects from me. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I actually want to throw in a little bonus uh, tool that you can use. Uh, I would go on Facebook, right? Because I've been doing I've been doing Facebook marketing for three years, and this is just kind of a little niche thing that not many people know that you can do. So what I would do is I would go on, and I would type in the Facebook search engine, uh, passive income or whatever your niche is, right? Whatever you're thinking, and yeah. then I would go and look at all of the public posts on Facebook and look for different books. You could even type type in passive income books. Right. So you want to find different posts, preferably ads for different books, right, that are related to your niche. Then what you want to do is you want to go look in the comment section and you want to go look for people who have said just bought this or I love this or, you know, something that indicates that they are a person who's interested in that sort of book. And then what you can do is go check out the, that person, go look at their likes and see what pages on Facebook they've liked. OK, so now you're finding pages that are directly related to your buyers you know that your buyers the buyers the people who are buyers of things that are related to your book are on facebook on these pages and then what you want to do is you want to go take those pages and plug it into what's called facebook's audience insights tool and, the, and this tool will tell you the demographic it'll tell you the age like all sorts of demographics like age income level gender marital status what type of house they have, what type of things that they buy. So you can take all that information and really talk to one person in particular. And that person's called your ideal customer, your yes. perfect target. Okay. So just by the way, all of these things can be done together. And, and I actually yeah. highly encourage you to do them together because Dale has given you some red hot fire when it comes to Amazon and Google and you know, mixed with the Facebook stuff that I was just telling you about, together you will have a very good idea of who your target market is. Therefore, you can match up that market with your niche, like Dale was saying, and bam, you are severely increasing your chances of becoming an international best-selling author. But let's keep going because we're yeah. getting a little bit uh, hung up on this. Um, let's move into very quickly talking. Uh, we're writing to market. Let's talk about your first draft and your editing. First draft, here's the thing. A lot of people get hung up. They're doing this whole writer's block thing. Listen, writer's block is all up here, folks, okay? It's mystery solved, all right? Get that first draft done. It really, it's gonna seem hard, but once when you get through it and you've done it a couple of times, the nice thing is it gets easier. 
So get the first draft pumped out. Don't worry about editing. Never hit the backspace. Never hit the delete. Never go back and rewrite things until you are done with that book. Because things are going to get flushed out in the editing process. And hopefully after you're done writing your first draft is when you'll go through the book and write, go through, correct everything. Spelling errors, typos, rewrite a couple sentences. And the next thing is, Ben, don't take this too lightly when I say this. Get a qualified editor. Anybody needs a good qualified editor, just go over onto my YouTube channel. I've interviewed numerous qualified editors, and they're inside my self-publishing interviews, and you can go over and you can hit up their information. Some of them can be very cost-effective, and some of them are going to be a little bit more higher ticket item, but I promise you, the more that you invest within your editing the better it's going to pay off in the long run. So you got to get a good quality content because here, let's face it, we can get a killer cover, we can get a great title, and we can get this awesome book description with the best ad copy in the world. But if there's garbage in the interior, your audience will let you know and you're going to be sunk. You need to think about long-term business solutions. And one of the best ways to really ensure that you're going to be around for the long haul, editor. It's where the money's at. I'm telling you, don't take this too lightly. Get a qualified editor and your editor is not your best friend. So don't expect, Ben, I'm sorry, buddy. You and I are bros, but I'm never sending you one of my works to, to do any editing. You might proofread for me. You might just kind of do a quick glance over, but I'll never ask you for editing. And I'm sure you're great at it, but I want to get somebody that is a professional who can be able to go through and not just find typos, but find plot hole errors in my fiction work or find areas where there might be some ambiguity or some kind of liability concern in my health and fitness books. So that's why editing is so perfect. Hopefully that gave you a good answer in a shortest time possible. Absolutely, absolutely. And just to share a quick personal anecdote, um, my my I'm actually an author too. And and my first book, uh, CEO at twenty, I published that July third of twenty sixteen. Now the reason that I tell you the date is because one, I'm super proud of it. Just gonna say that. But two, because I started writing that book July of twenty fifteen. It took me a year to put out that first book. And the reason that it did is because I went through the edit phase three times. I got three different people to edit my book. I got my dad, who's an attorney who writes all day. I got one of my um, aunts, who is a licensed psychologist who writes almost every day. And I got a very highly regarded English professor who I know very well to, to proofread. So all of those people know what they're doing as far as proofreading and editing and writing. And so you know, there's kind of there's kind of like the the two different ways to go, right? Obviously, Dale knows what he's talking about, and you know, hiring a very very talented editor, you know, you can you can invest some money in that, and that can pay off for the long run. But what I did, I took a little bit more time and found people whom I trusted to do the job for me, and you know, we we made deals between those those people and myself. So you know, it doesn't have to break the bank. But I think the resounding message here is you need to find very, very quality editing work. You need, you need to find a very high quality editor or editors, uh, plural, to, to make sure that you polish that book. Because like Dale said, you can have the best cover, the best title, the best description. You can be great at marketing and you can sell that book. But if that book on the inside is not red hot fire, if that's not pure gold, you, you're spinning your wheels. You're wasting your time. OK, because if you cannot stand behind your book 100 percent and you if you cannot say this book is one of the greatest books you'll ever read, I know because I wrote it and had all of this editing work, you know, people are going to feel that, you know, they're going to they're going to feel that lack of passion. They're going to feel that that lack of editing and that lack of polish, and it's going to negatively affect your brand. So, um, you know, as far as editing goes, the resounding message here get a good freaking editor like it, it's gonna it's gonna save you so much hassle and gonna generate you so much more money and help you get to that international best-selling author level so much faster and it may seem like something that it's not super important because nobody's checking you you know nobody's like nobody has a checklist and like did you get it professionally edited yes did you do this right but when it goes to market that's when it's gonna either take off 
or blow up right in your face. And the editing is what is going to determine that. Okay, so we talked a little bit about editing. Kind of went off on a tangent there, but I think it's important. Um, let's talk about the product packaging. So now let's talk about the cover, the book descriptions, keywords, that whole can of worms. Let's get into it. Yeah, this is, you know, it's it's a lot, of, it's very funny. Some people probably, when you're watching this, you're saying, what does this have to do anything with international bestsellers? What we're trying to do is set you up the groundwork. So that way it, it becomes easier because once when you get into the other processes and if you can lay the best foundation and understand the core fundamentals of this, everything else, it's gravy, baby. That's, it really is. It's gravy, baby. You can say that, tent, put that on a shirt. Uh, <laughs> so any event, uh, so here's the thing is product packaging. It's, it's just absolutely critical. I've already kind of gave a little bit of insights into understanding title and subtitle choice, because I already had you look at things like the also bots. What is your market looking at? What are common titles and what are some searchable keywords that are you see commonly in a lot of these different things within a particular niche. So for passive income, you'll notice one thing that's repeated time and time again, how to make money, passive income, how to make passive income. You'll find all these different long tail keywords that could probably pay, play a huge factor in your title and your subtitle. Be very choosy. Don't go crazy or spammy on things because I promise you over the next five years, those spammy titles you're seeing inside the Amazon Kindle store or anywhere outside of that, they're going to be gone, okay? Because the audience is becoming more discerning. So be very selective, but in the same instance, um, you know, get it to where you can say exactly what is inside your book in the title and subtitle. It's going to be a little more problematic in fiction, and that is where you're going to start to suss out a better solution through a great book description, okay? Book descriptions are the tool that you must, must, must get hammered down, probably just as good as the interior because you need to sell people within a few sentences. You need to entice the buy. And that is where it's really important. So if you've got to hire out a copywriter or write out that description ahead of time and hand it to your editor and have them pick it apart piece by piece, hand it out to a couple of other beta readers that they can read that and pick it out piece by piece until you've got a great solution that is not just a summary of what your book about is about, but it is an ad. It is literally like a trailer for a movie. You've gone to the movies before. The book description is essentially the trailer to it. You want to get it to where people are like, oh my gosh, all the explosions are at the beginning. You've got the voice like that where everybody just kind of gets all pumped up. You need to have the same thing for your book description. You got to entice the buy and the biggie. The biggie and the one that I just can't say enough about, okay? This is just as valuable as the editing, okay? Don't put these amateur Bush League covers on the front of your book, okay? You could have a Mercedes Benz interior, but if you all of a sudden put yourself I don't know, uh, throw, throw in a word, a, a Volkswagen Beetle that's all rusted out and the bumper's falling off on the front. Who's going to buy that? No one. No one's going to buy that. So here's what I'm going to say. Book covers. Take money. You got to bootstrap it. Go for it. If you need to beg, borrow, or steal to get yourself a good quality cover, then do it. If you're not a graphic designer, you should not be making your own covers. And for the love of all things sacred within self-publishing industry, cover creator does not make a good cover. Sorry, just going to say it right now. Cover creator just doesn't cut the mustard. If you need to put that rough paint job over top of it in the interim, that's fine. I understand. But as soon as you have the money to launch a good book with a great cover, you need to do that. So there's many other ways you can be able to get a hold of some great graphic design artists that specifically work with covers, but you're going to spend anywhere from right about roughly, I would say $65 to about $300 for a good quality ebook cover. Sometimes more, it really depends. I think you had mentioned, uh, what was the, the one that you told me about that was a little cheaper? Um, well, I always think that you can go to Upwork.com and go okay. find a, uh, a really good designer uh, that, that you can work with. Um, but as far as like a specific, uh, a specific website to go to, 
Um, you're just going to have to play around with it. And, and you know, I, I would reach out to different authors, uh, reach out to different publishers, and just kind of ask around, see see what people uh, have had experience with. Like you can go to Facebook groups and you can connect with other publishers. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can drop a comment in the live chat and, and we'll get back to it if you're looking for that. Um, but uh, I'm not going to recommend any particular individual. Uh, I'm just going to say that it, it definitely does help to to have a very high quality cover, but but not just the cover, like you were saying, the the description, the cover, the keywords, all these things are super important. Absolutely. And when, when, you know, you're, if you're listening to this, you may be saying, man, this seems like a lot of freaking work. This seems, you know, I have to get my, I have to write my book. I have to pick a really good niche. I have to get a badass cover. I have to have awesome description, awesome keywords, and then I have to get my whole thing edited and proof it. It has to be pure fire on the inside. Well, yeah, that's the point. We're we're teaching you how to how to create an international bestseller. That's that's not an easy feat. Like this, this is not something that everybody can do. That's why it's the bestseller. It's the top of the top, the upper echelon here, Great. right? So. Yep. Cream of the crop. You can't be doing this anything lightly. You can't really, you can't haphazardly jump into things and expect to have great results. And it was something, a conversation I had with Johnny Andrews just before I got on here. If you treat this like a hobby, it will pay you like a hobby. But if you treat this like a business, my goodness, it'll pay you like a business for the long term. And that's the key. So if you want to do a hobby, by all means, Go ahead and get your aunt to make this beautiful cover that's questionable at best and may not get very many sales. If you feel better about yourself because you've supported your aunt and her semi-budding career as a graphic design cover artist, go for it by all means. But man, you know, you got to keep that on lockdown. So I'm glad that you and I always agree on this one. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you might be saying, well, you know, I don't, I really don't, I can't justify spending that much money on my book. Okay, one thing I do want you to, to put in perspective here, or I want to put in perspective for you is, you invest money up front, right? Let's say you invest a couple hundred dollars on a cover, a couple hundred dollars on really good editing, some yeah. good copywriting. So you're spending, you know, a couple hundred to maybe a thousand dollars to put a very, very, very nice product together. Okay, mm -hmm. that one product, that one book, can go and it can top the charts for years. And years, and you can make so much more money from that initial investment because it is high quality. Because it is high quality. Like, think of a book like How to Win Friends and Influence People. Do you think Dale Carnegie was like, uh, yeah, this might work. I'll just toss it out. I'll spend five minutes on this cover. It's fine. I'll just, you know, I'll just put that out there. No, he took time to make it very high quality. And it is still today. Like almost a hundred years, uh, you know, since the publishing of it, it is still a best-selling book. That is what we're trying to to, to convey here. You got to put in the work on the front end, so that later down the road you can go and do whatever you want and sip, you know, margaritas on the beach in the Bahamas if you want, because your book is on the freaking top of the bestsellers list. Okay, but it starts with the quality. It starts with the quality. Okay, so that was our first step. And we covered right to market. Um, now let's talk about the second step, step number two, the step that comes right after step number one, and that <laughs> is creating buzz. Okay, let's talk about social media. Dale, can you take it away, my friend? All right. So this is important that social media is a tool, but uh, much like a handgun or a sword, if you don't use it properly, it can end up really hurting you. And, uh, and I, I'm saying this as I'm pointing one finger forward and three back at myself because I've been guilty of this myself is you have got a product. Okay, let's just start with friends and family. Let's say Facebook, for example, you guys can use any social media platform that you wish to and it's applicable in all, all walks. Just sharing your progress of where you're going. Oh, I'm excited. I'm writing a book on passive income. And some people go, oh, yay. But here's a really cool thing. If you really want to get them engaged, you need to get them involved. You need to get it to where you're not just telling people things. Have people share things about themselves. 
I'm writing this book about passive income. Can anybody make any good recommendations for really good books out there like this? There's a very basic one off the top of my head. If you go and you try to go out and create buzz like this, it's a simple way of soft selling people well in advance. Heck, you cannot even have a single word written about your book. If you go and use this particular strategy and you just sprinkle a little bit here, a little bit there over the next year that you're writing your book or maybe the next month, you can be able to put a little bit and some people feel invested in it. Another way to do it is you go get three covers done. I highly recommend anybody out there that's doing this, if you can afford the discretionary expense to get three different types of covers, put it out there and have people vote on that cover. Because now people feel invested. Oh, I voted for B. He chose B. I am going to buy that book. I helped him choose that. They can also give you feedback on what they do and don't like about something. You can use the same process that you would for say a sample chapter. Here's a sample chapter from my upcoming book. I'd love to have your open and honest thoughts when you get a moment, something like that, that you can get it to where people go, well, the sentence structure is not all that great, or I enjoyed that, so on and so forth. So social media is a great tool to create that buzz. For something like this, where we're at currently YouTube, YouTube is, an amazing tool for creating buzz. So you can imagine if I start talking in my specific channel, I'm putting out a book on self-publishing, which I'm not, folks, don't, don't get all excited. If I'm putting out a book on self-publishing, you can only imagine if I started talking about it today and I said, I'm writing a book on how to self-publish and get your first number one international best-selling book in 30 days. Can you imagine some people are like, oh, I can't wait. They're going to immediately start talking and creating some kind of buzz within the YouTube ethos. So there's many ways that you can create the buzz. One thing I don't recommend you do is just go in, show up to a group that's based on your niche and go buy my book. You know how many people are going to buy it? Zero. Cause you're weird. People don't buy from people that are weird. Okay. This, this is like direct sales, you know, and look, I, I did direct sales at one point and I made things weird. Okay, I'd go up and I'd say, hey, what's going on? What's your name? You go, hey, I'm Ben. And I go, cool. Hey, you want to try out this energy drink? You're like, no. Absolutely not. I don't want to try out that energy right. drink. Who yeah. are you? And, and even then, yes, this is kind of like just, yeah, what, what? Hi. Hi. You want to take me out to a date before you screw me first? You know, so it, that's the thing is don't make things weird. Okay. <laughs> try to keep it very basic. And here's the thing is when you're creating buzz and building a relationship, okay, Take a step back for a second. Ask yourself, am I being weird? Okay, pretend like you're approaching yourself from a third person perspective and you're starting to write that post and pretend like it's real life. Like you're coming up to this person on the sidewalk, you hardly know each other or maybe you haven't seen each other in a while. And all of a sudden you go up and say, hey, what's up, how's it going? Buy my book. Oh, it's free, it's free. Listen, just because your book is free doesn't mean people want it, okay? That's like going and walking up and handing someone a business card before they even care about your business. So build the relationships on social media. It's this one, I tell you, we can probably camp out on this one because this right here, you can create the buzz through social media. There's other ways that we can also do that. Absolutely, absolutely. I just actually wanna, wanna share a quick anecdote. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go back to, to you know July 3rd when I published my first book. I didn't know these things, right? So, <laughs> you know, I want you guys to learn from my mistakes because I have made a ton. Mine too. Okay? Mine too. <laughs> yeah. So, so what I did was, first of all, and this was kind of cool. Uh, I called my mom. That was the first. That was the first thing I did when the mom, when my book was published on Amazon. You, you better call your mom first. That, oh, I totally call my. <laughs> I called my mom and I was like, "Mom, I want you to go to your email. I sent you a link. Just click on it and tell me what you think." And so she goes to the email. I hear her, like typing in her stuff, and then I hear, "Oh my God, what what is this? Did you write this?" And it was awesome, right? Yeah. My mom wanted to buy it because she's my mom, mm -hmm. but not everybody else is gonna have that same reaction. Okay. No. Not no. everybody is gonna think like that because not everybody is that invested in you. They don't know you. They don't trust you. Okay. Right. Correct. So what I the mistake that I made was thinking that everybody would be that excited. I wrote a book, okay? To everybody else, who cares?
nobody can, they don't care right so what i did was in my infinite youthful ignorance was <laughs> <laughs> i went on facebook and i literally slid into everybody's dms that i knew i, I literally facebook messaged and texted every single person that i had ever met in my entire life and i was like hey guys how's it going how are you how are you doing and i just kept kept typing away furiously furiously for days and the the end of it the call to action for them was buy my book and i maybe got a few pity sales from that but let me tell you it is not worth your time you do not want to spend your time cold texting or facebook messaging people because like dale like you said it's weird people don't like being sold to and they no. can tell if you're hitting them up out of the blue randomly they're gonna know something's up and then when you try to sell them their sell them your book or sell them anything they're gonna be like ah this is it this is the reason why they hit me up then you lose trust with them your reputation is a little bit messed up so do what dale just said build that buzz beforehand in an appropriate way don't do like i did don't bombard people when the book is released it doesn't work trust me no you're, you're better off that that time that's spent you're better off probably even you know getting a hold of different uh website promotional uh type tools you can even uh, look at investing in some facebook ads or ams ads or some other kind of advertising because it's better that you spend that time creating advertisement where it is an expected etiquette that people understand they're going to be sold in an ad as opposed to a person-to-person -person relationship where all of a sudden you've just made this an awkward situation you just i want everybody to think about it this way okay if you go up to a person and you know no sooner had had you said hello to them and then you're trying to peddle your book in some capacity whether it's free discounted or you think they might be into it i want you to think about this it's like putting your hands into their pocket do you think they're going to be cool with that they're not they're not going to be cool. Yeah. Try to put your hand in my pocket. I, I, I implore you, if you ever run into me, try to put your hand in my pocket. See what my reaction is going to be. If first of all, <laughs> A, it's going to be not very good. And the next thing is, it's weird. It is very weird. So that, that's we can go down the whole weird path because that's, that's really, and, and to be honest with you, when it came to actually getting the international sales, I never ever once had to go to anybody in Australia and say, buy my book. That's not what I did. Did not do that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, just to recap, whenever you guys do meet Dale in real life, do not put your hands in his pocket. Probably should. No, no, actually, I. I, I I, I, I retract my Im imploring of you uh, folks here. Don't put your hand in my pocket. It, it will turn violent. <laughs> there might be police involved. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, let's get back on topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a ton of fun. Um, okay, so let's keep going with uh, with creating buzz. Um, let's talk about uh, something that I think is brilliant that you taught me, uh, establishing an ARC team. Mm, yes, an advanced reader copy team. And this, this is going to be kind of fun because we can really go on for a while on this one. Essentially what you need to do, and I'm going to talk to the newbie self-publishers out here, the people who haven't broken ground here. A lot of them are going to say, how can I get an advanced reader copy team when I haven't even published a book? If you have your book done, don't just shoot it out into the market. That's my, that's, that's my biggest advice. Even if you had the editor, you got the copy written, you've got the cover done, stop. Set it on a simmer, okay? Let it hang about there. Trust me, that book ain't going nowhere. It's going to make some money. But what I need you to do is you're going to develop some way of capturing leads or getting more of a following even though you don't have one. And this can be a very simple process simple process such as going to sites like noise trade insta freebie book funnel these type of services are a quid pro quo style service what ends up happening is let's say you upload a sample chapter or a spin-off of your book that's going to be released here pretty soon and exchange for a person's email yep that's right people will exchange their email for this and because you can get this email, now you can communicate with this person openly. 
chances are likely when you get these emails, you're going to communicate with them. The very first thing is, hey, what's up? It's Dale. You picked up my book not too long ago over on Insta Freebie. I'm really excited to know what your thoughts are about this. Oh, by the way, that book actually ties into such and such. Just thought you'd want to know. Okay, not pushing anything. I'm just waiting for a response from that email person. So when that person gets back to me, we can start to develop and build this relationship to where hopefully they see some value in being an advanced reader and part of the advanced reader copy team. So with those advanced reader copies, what you're going to end up doing is as soon as you can have all these emails built up, let's say over 30 to, to 90 days, we'll say, on these various websites, get all these emails, start to really find out who's opening the emails. And next thing is, is who's more motivated, who really is starting to go, okay, I really like your stuff. And those are the people you're going to start to build on that team. And you can send those advanced copies to them and they can start to give you feedback before it even goes out in the market. So you can make small little tweaks and changes within your product before it even hits the market. And that's going to be the beauty is you start to communicate with your audience and start to know exactly what they want and tweak it from there. So those are the nice things you can do early on. And here's the beauty of it. You ready for this? The advanced reader copy team can also provide reviews upon release. So we're, I don't want to go too far down this path because I know that you're starting to guide some of this stuff. So uh, does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And not only can they give you those reviews upon upon launch, but if you've built up enough of a relationship with them, um, you know, they, they'll be happy to, to help you out. Like they'll, they'll be happy to spread spread the word of your book and, and really help you to get into the market and, and to really get some people, get some traction, get some traffic to your book. Um, so, yeah, what would you, you know, just one of the one of the be additional benefits of getting these reviews early on is that as you're launching your book, as you're putting your book out to the marketplace, all the pe the fresh people, the cold traffic that are that are coming to see your book, they'll see all these reviews. And let's say you publish your book on November 16th. Let's say you publish it today. Well, if you have reviews starting the 16th, the 17th, the 18th, the 19th, right? If you have these reviews early on, people are going to say, wow, this must be a really good book. It gives you a lot of social proof. It gives you so much more credibility to where you are now an authority and your book is, is your book is positioned so well because you've done the work beforehand. Right. Again, it's it all kind of comes back to are you willing to put in the work on the front end to where once you launch this bad boy or bad girl, then it can it, it can do its thing, continue on to top that bestseller list. And, you know, if you're really, really feeling generous, you can even give your your ARC team a one time free offer to put their hand in your pocket. It, you know, that's just it. <laughs> if you want, <laughs> as an added bonus. Don't recommend it to all people. Yeah. You know, sometimes it could be weird. But if you're, if you're cool <laughs> with the pocket thing, for sure. For sure, man. Wow, man. I didn't know we were going to go this direction, but this is some next level stuff. Let me tell you, the, the, <laughs> pocket, the pocket trick. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's, it's crazy. And there's no hard and fast rule when it comes to getting an advanced reader copy team. I mean, if you got some close friends and family, there are going to be some people that want to do that. You'll find, though, when you're a few years into this business, that some of the people that you had started out with your advanced reader copy team, they're not going to be there in another few years. So be prepared that you're going to be going through a cycle. You uh, ideally want to have right about 30 to 60 people on this team. So I would really, really recommend that before you launch that first book, try to build up your team that much. Get out there, build an author page on Facebook, um, get it to where you have a landing page to where people can just get your sample chapter or your spinoff book and you get the email right to you because you don't even have to use Insta Freebie or a book funnel or noise trade. You can just use your own uh, landing page with your author name. You know, it could be something as simple as dalelroberts.com and they go over to that and it says download my free five free recipes that are in go along with your 90 day home workout plan, plug, plug on my next book, you know, one of those type of things. So there's really no hard and fast rules. One thing I would really recommend is get yourself familiar with the Amazon review, uh, community review guidelines because uh, they change from time to time. And sometimes the wording is so important. I know they used to allow 
for I received a complimentary copy in exchange for an honest review, no more. So if anybody's watching this and you're providing reviews for a friend or something like that, don't say that anymore and said that, that the verbiage will get you, you pulled down and possibly having your review privileges revoked. Don't want that to happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So we're kind of getting close to uh, running out of time. So let's move on to the third step. Uh, yeah. Let's quickly talk about um, getting all of our projects into alignment. Um, and that is how we can effectively utilize our books as an ebook, as a print book, and as an audiobook. Dale, my man, take it away. Yeah. So here's the thing is you need to have a launch date. Okay, don't just pr press publish and just hope for the best because I'm going to tell you, you might be successful. You might be the one in a million person that, you know, gets, you know, 10,000 out the gate, $10,000 per month out the gate. But let's be real. Okay, you need to plan these things in the head. And I'm going to say this as an example, I, I will almost always talk in almost 30 to 90 day periods. 30 days as a minimum, you need to plan ahead. 90 days would be a little bit better because it gives you a little bit more time that you can promote and get that book out there. So ultimately you want to see all three of those particular types of books launch at the same time. That's right. We're not just going for Kindle, all right? We're going to be having all three of these mediums because not everybody wants to have a Kindle book. This is, this is true here, here, this is a fact. 70% of the market still buys print books, hardbacks and paperbacks. It is, it's a fact. It's not me just spouting off of, well, actually it is kind of anecdotal since I won't be able to give you any kind of reference, but you can look up the American Association of Publishers released a report earlier this year that said that nearly 70% of publications bought worldwide is on print books. So you've got your ebook, you've got your print book, get that audio book rocking and rolling. That's going to probably be the hardest one out of all of them to get those produced and relaunched at the same time, especially if you use something like audiobook creation exchange, because you're almost working on their, their time. As soon as you get it all uploaded, you just kind of hope and wait. Any event, try to get the launch periods all work together. Here's what I'm going to get you to do is you're going to work a pre-order. You're going to start with the ebook and we're going to start to build off that ebook. Let's say in another 30 days from now, I'm going to launch that book. We're starting the pre-order today. No one can get the copy of the book, but what they can do is they can purchase at a lower rate. This is what I recommend to you is don't go full retail on a pre-sale. It's not too many times you see a pre-sale that's run and it's, you know, going full cost. And if it is, there's probably some type of a bonus attached to it. So if you go for pre-sale, try to get it as low as you can go. So if your book is say $2.99 uh, upon release, then shoot for 99 cents. Everybody can afford a buck. Okay. Now, notice this said a dollar. Isn't that nice? Everybody can afford a dollar. You can be able to reach out to those friends and family, maybe beat them up a little bit, but use that only once, guys. Especially if you're releasing one book a month, they're, they're going to get sick of, you know, giving you a dollar every time you turn around. And so that's going to really help grease the wheels and get things going. Because when you can kind of entice people through a great book description and offer a reason for people to buy on pre-sale, you're going to start to gain the confidence of the Amazon search engine. It's going to start to go, huh, there's got to be something to this. And they're going to start to push that. Here's the beauty. I don't know if I've ever told you this, Ben, but you can become a best selling author without even having to release a book. That's right. On pre sale, you can actually have the best seller tag on something. This happens quite a bit. So if you can really get, let's say, three to four dozen sales, that's. <laughs> 36 to 48 dollars worth of sales. It's not going to, you know, break the bank, but it's going to be enough that it's going to leverage that attention to the top of a bestsellers list. You become a hot new release as well, so you're appearing in numerous other places and if you can get yourself into 10 categories, which last I knew, you can attach 10 categories to one particular book. Please choose your categories wisely and don't be a spam artist. So, at any rate, you get all the, that leveraged attention so therefore it's going to get in front of more people and you're going to get more sales and you've got 30 days to do this all within. Here's the ticket. And I think this is the part that you got you excited a little bit was remember our advanced review copy, uh, reader to, uh, copy team. Okay. We're going to launch the print book, the paperback or the hardback. It might be, we're going to launch it 15 days before launch date, not 30 days. Remember I said, we want to kind of have everything launching right about the same time. The reason why we're going to shoot for the print first, 
is so that we can get that out on the market and have the opportunity for our advanced reader copy team, as well as any of our review team to get their reviews up. Now, you don't want people posting reviews all on the same day. Just say it launches on this day. If they happen to miss the window of opportunity after the print's done, that's okay. We want these reviews coming in organically. So Amazon not going, oh, he's hiring people. He's paying people to kind of scam the system. You want them to kind of come out organically, getting it to where you're not pressing people and going, hey, where'd you review? Where's your review? Where's your review? Okay. That print version, releasing it, gives it a little bit of window of time before that ebook hits. Bearing in mind that we've got those reviews kind of piling in and starting to build up, launch date, you've got yourself about a half dozen to a dozen reviews. It's going to really get that going and get it to where the machine is working for you. And then it just becomes an avalanche after that point. Because it, then once when you go to launch day, you have the print that's doing good. You've got the eBooks doing good. And hopefully if audiobooks in place, we've got all these three items working together to build you an amazing author platform. And, and the beauty of that is, that was, that was very nice, by the way, Dale. I think that was very well put. Um, the, the beauty of that is that all of those different, um, how do you say, all those different formats of your book, on Amazon, they will come together very nicely to where it says like ebook, print book, and audiobook all in one thing. So people could theoretically come in and they could buy out the whole, you know, all three copies. Or they might come for the for the ebook and buy the print. Or they might come for the audiobook and buy the ebook and so on and so forth. So it, it just gives you additional uh, avenues for visibility and for traffic and to make more sales. So it's almost a no-brainer. You got to have all three, the print, audiobook, and the ebook. And I challenge you to actually go back and listen to the to the the very the very very um, you know specifics of what Dale was saying because he was dropping some red hot fire there and that's something that very 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 few authors and publishers actually know about the timing of when to release your different uh, different formats and, and how to really leverage that ARC team. Okay, so we talked about, um, number one, we talked about writing to market. Uh, we talked about the niche research. We talked about the drafts. We talked about editing, the packaging. Step two, we talked about creating buzz on social media. Um, we talked about the cover selection, title choice, the beta team, uh, the landing pages. We talked about the ARC team. We even talked a little bit about um, you know, pockets and putting your hands in them and, you know, some of that, some of that stuff. Uh, we talked about third, the getting all your projects in alignment, um, doing the pre-sale 30 to 90 days. Now let's talk about the final step, which is the actual launch. So Dale, you want to take that away, my man? Yeah. Don't publish and pray. This is going to be the easiest way for me to put it. It seems ambiguous as possible, but as we're wrapping up on time, uh, what I want to kind of do is tell you that you can't just put it out and hope for the best. Marketing can be something as simple. If you're working on a fixed budget, if you don't have any money whatsoever and you're just waiting for the royalties to come in, you need to get out. First of all, podcasts are always looking for guests. I know as a fact, and in fact, I'm, I'm calling out anybody's watching this. I'm always looking for guests on my YouTube channel. Look into YouTube channels. They're always looking. You can always just send a screener copy over to somebody who has a channel or a podcast and say, hey, I think I've got something that might work with your audience. Reach out to blogs, to websites that are within your niche and offer something that is of service to them. Don't go over there. Once again, make it weird. You got to tell what's in it for them. Okay. I'm not just going to show over, hey, do you want to interview me? No, I don't want that. But if you come over to me and you say to me, hey, I've got this really awesome book I just launched not too long ago. I think that some of my following would probably appreciate your channel. So if you just take a minute to talk to me via video chat, I can tell you a little bit more about why an interview with me is going to make sense. So if you can get out there and find the best ways to get out there, be everywhere at the same time, as Grant Cardone said. And this is something I almost daily employ. I, here's an example. I literally just got off an interview. I came on with you and I'm going to jump off here and I'm getting on another one because I want to be everywhere at the same time. And then we've already talked about Facebook ads. We haven't touched on Amazon marketing service ads. Those are dead simple. 
There's Twitter ads. We can get into those type of things. Here's the thing is sometimes those things can be dirt cheap and super effective. What I would recommend though, if you have never used an ad service system before, start with one. Start with one and master that before you spread out into other avenues. But to make it super simple and get it to where we're honoring brevity right now, just know this, get out there. It doesn't cost a dime to go to a library and set up an event. Libraries will wanna host a author signing. Heck, go to your local Barnes and Noble and say, hey, I, I just launched a recent book and I think it'd be pretty awesome. I'll be able to promote the event through social media as well as my email list. So many ways you can be able to go out and have to spend a dime in order to market and promote who you are as a brand. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, when it comes down to the book launching, uh, guys and gals, it's most the most important thing is that you're out there doing it, right? If you're if you're constantly going to look uh, on podcasts to to be a guest, if you're constantly going to different blogs and saying, "Hey, can I write you a guest post and provide value to you?" Right, giving value to people. And then once you've delivered that value, asking for value back, that's a great way to go out and get yourself all over the web. Okay. So just keep trying, keep doing it. Eventually you will find a traffic source that works and then you master that and you can move on. Okay. So again, we talked about the four steps, right to market, create that buzz, get everything in alignment and launch baby launch. Okay. So, Dale, I want to thank you so much for jumping onto this workshop. Uh, you know, I want to thank every, everybody for being on this workshop. Uh, Dale, if you want to just take the last couple minutes to wrap it up, um, go for it, man. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, if you have to be watching this one live, and I know there's some people watching this live, hit that thumbs up. If you're watching this on the replay, please pick a thumb, thumb up, thumb down. Either way, we want you to choose a side and make sure if you enjoy this content, you share it with somebody else that you know, because if we know that you enjoy this, we'll see the shares and I'll come back to the table and we can kind of start to break it down into the actual micro content of what you do for promotional and things like that, because I can spend easily an hour to two hours on each one of those specific steps. If you want further information, you can always head over to my YouTube channel, Self Publishing with Dale L. Roberts. You can search that up in YouTube, or you can head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com and you can get further information. That's really all I got. I really appreciate you taking the time here with me, Ben. This one turned out much, much better than last week where <laughs> it didn't work out in our favor, did it? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, so again, Dale, I do want to thank you so very much for coming on the workshop. Uh, and I do very much appreciate you dropping all this red hot fire. To everybody else who is on this workshop live, y'all are awesome. Y'all are the best. Um, if you guys... Um, you know, continue to be this awesome. I don't know how we're all going to deal with it because y'all are the best. To everybody who is not watching live, I still love you. Y'all are still awesome. Um, again, hit that either thumbs up or thumbs down button. Let us know what you think. Drop some comments, some questions, some concerns in the comment section below or the live chat. We will get back to you and that way we know how to help you more. So as always, I love you guys. Let's build a better world together.